Good evening. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Tony Vesterovic. And um, uh, Nadia Mustapic. Um, and we're uh, thrilled to be here and um, present uh, a piece that uh, we accomplished last year, that this year. So um, the first part uh, of the presentation will focus on uh, introducing the piece um, and the local context of the city of Rijeka because it is a site-specific piece, as Alisa mentioned. And then after that, we'll show um, a video, which is a video documentation of the installation, so you can see how the work functioned uh, in, in that specific site. <clears throat> and then we'll go back to talking a bit more and we'll talk about uh, the piece in more detail and in the end we will show another video which is um, an excerpt uh, from the video which is um, the main component of this installation. Uh, so we'll show for about 10 minutes of this piece but um, it's um, about an hour long. Um, so um, this is a collaborative project uh, by Tony and I, and uh, we have both our individual and collaborative practices. And uh, when Masaget is invited us, it was by the end of 2013, uh, to propose a, a project uh, that would be about Rijeka. Uh, we, we really um, uh, wanted to use um, uh, this uh, occasion, this um, opportunity to to uh, to make a piece that um, also uh, is uh, a little bit uh, a little bit outside of our standard practice. That is that it's a, a, like a like a kind of a step forward a little bit for us because uh, we decided to work uh, on. Um, uh, on a public site, um, in a public space. So, uh, we should start with showing uh, the city of Rijeka. And maybe some of you have been at the presentation by Althea Tauberger, mm -hmm. who has also talked about the city of Rijeka. So, this will be a uh, refreshing of memory or for those who haven't uh, been at a talk, uh, we'll just explain a little bit about the city. In this slide you can see the main port area and then the city around it. And um, we just wanted to choose a slide that illustrates how really the city developed around the port. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. And um, here's another slide uh, that also illustrates um, the geography or the terrain of the city, so you can see that from the sea level where the center of the city is and the port is, um, the terrain rises and so, so really that means that the whole city and the citizens from wherever they live, they have a view of the port. Um, and um, uh, one of our previous um, collaborative projects uh, was also related to the city as many of uh, some other projects that we did independently or together. This is a slide of a piece called uh, Moment of Silence, which was a multi-channel uh, video installation uh, for a gallery space. Um, and it was about um, the shipyard industry in Croatia, because there is a major shipyard in Rijeka, uh, and another one in Split. Um, <clears throat> and the fact that in the past five, six years or so, um, the shipyard industry in, in Croatia has been um, in decline or in the process of shutting down as part of uh, larger negotiations of Croatia entering the EU. So uh, this, um, this was a piece that um, related strongly to the city, um, and then another one um, that uh, was shot on, on the launching ramp of uh, an extra torpedo factory in Rijeka. So these are just to illustrate 
that we have been doing a lot of different projects uh, in Rijeka about different sites in Rijeka and about Rijeka's history and present. Another piece by Tony that was shot on, on this long pier called Molo Longo, just in front of the port. And uh, um, this is an area of a container terminal uh, where we made our first piece together. Uh, and then you probably, some of you might recognize uh, the factory, um, Rikard Bencic, where Althea Tauberger made a piece, but also in 2008, um, uh, Marin Lukanovic and I made a documentary about it. So when the Masagetis approached us to make a piece about Rijeka, uh, we were thinking uh, how, um, how we can uh, approach the, the, the topic of the city in a way that we haven't so far. And <laughs> we realized that we actually made pieces about different different parts of the city, but not about something that is very central, which is the port and the railway. And we'll now say a little bit about it and why it is central. Uh, Rijeka as a city was constructed um, by uh, Austro-Hungarians, uh, so um, mid-1800s uh, mid uh, was when uh, Rijeka started to take its shape and form as it is today. And the port was built at that time as, a, as the empire's port access to the sea. So it became a port of the city of Budapest. Um, and also the, the Hungarians um, built a railway that connected the continental part of Europe to the Adriatic, to Rijeka. So the port and the railway were the main uh, entry points, like historic and strategic entry points into the city. And the city built around it, was built around it, um, which um, um, really kind of defined the character and the identity of the city. So slowly it became a worker city with a very strong industry or many industries that related to the port or uh, the shipyard which was built um, afterwards and um, um, that is not the case anymore because since the 19 uh, since the the 1990s uh, since uh, the last uh, war um, that was going on in Croatia uh, the port of Rijeka um, closed down and has never really fully recovered so we were really interested in, in the fact that uh, the port area and the railway area, which in the past um, uh, 15 years or so have been uh, undergoing this kind of traumatic period uh, of um, a slow decline, um, uh, how they have historically been uh, central for the city, uh, but today are only central geographically uh, and uh, are actually areas in the very center of the city that are invisible and kind of marginalized and not really used. And the reasons why they're not used or are invisible is because um, the port is the territory of the port authority and not the city itself. And uh, the railway um, station and, and the railway strip um, is um, mm, like the entire Croatian railway uh, undergoing a slow process of uh, bankruptcy. Uh, so nobody really uses the trains anymore. Um, and, uh, and, and the, the train system hasn't been modernized since the time it was built. Uh, so... Um, uh, only a few people um, really pass through the train station on a daily basis. Um, and, uh, and, and, and that's, that's a major shift for the city. So we were really interested in looking, in, looking closely into, um, into these areas and, and their backgrounds and, and current situations. And um, I mentioned these walls and invisibility. This slide shows 
uh, on the left side uh, there's there's an actual wall uh, which walls off this other part um, uh, where the railway is and the port is, um, which is also access to the sea. So the city of Rijeka is a sea, it's a city on the sea, but because of these areas which are right in the center of the city, um, uh, citizens of Rijeka uh, don't really have access to the sea. Um, another reason why we were really interested in this uh, site is because we just we live there. We live right across from the train station, and uh, this is this is the view from our our window. And these are our, our kids who are totally crazy about trains, and we spend a lot of time there every day. Anyway, as you can see <laughs> from these slides, um, so um, so um, we. Uh, we decided to, to, to propose a piece that would enable us to invest a longer period of time uh, in a process-oriented project uh, through which we would research and explore and document over time what is going on or what is not happening uh, in these areas um, of the port and the railway. Um, so... In this slide, you can see the area of the port, and I'm sorry this is in Croatian, but I will translate. Um, these are some sites that are actually um, uh, like concrete places that we focused on when we were working on this piece, and you will see later on when we show you this piece. But the first arrow over there, um, that's um, uh, an old historic um, locomotive turntable, or I'm not sure if that's the right word in English, um, which is an incredible big kind of half circular building, um, which is pretty much out of use um, today. And then these other arrows are showing different docks, um, which used to be filled with ships. And a lot of people say, uh, Riekans uh, learned to count <laughs> by watching uh, 30, 40, 50 ships uh, in the port and outside of the port kind of waiting to get in to the port. And, and as we've shown this, the, the slide at the beginning you, where you can see that um, the terrain raises from the sea level. So from everybody's windows, everybody's homes, people have a view of the port. So. Um, that has changed drastically. Now you don't see ships anymore. Uh, and uh, maybe like per week, there's a two, three ships that come in. So the port is still operating, but on very kind of minimal um, level. This is another slide that shows uh, an area of the port uh, where you can see how connected the train station and the railway strip are to the port itself, and then these big buildings here <coughs> uh, at the port are called um, metropolis. Uh, those are really big, um, now protected as cultural, industrial cultural heritage uh, buildings that used to be warehouse buildings until when the port was really um, working. Um, but but since, since the way of... Um, how the port business operates has changed and, and, and cargo shifted into containers, all of these buildings uh, became, um, what's the word? Um, Unusable. <laughs> um, uh, yes. Um, Outdated. Right, thank you. So, um, so, so there's, there's uh, like what one of the issues about the port um, is uh, what to do with these buildings which are taking up large uh, um, partial large areas uh, in, in the port and um, the port can't really extend uh, as, you, as you have seen in, in the first slide the city was uh, built around it and, and there's no space for the port to extend, but then there are all these uh, unused um, uh, pieces of architecture which are empty and um, uh, under um, protection. Uh, 
but cannot be used for other purposes because they're on a territory which is Port Authority and it's uh, a customs area, it's uh, off limits. Um, so just a few more facts. Um, today, um, uh, the, the citizens of Rijeka uh, still have a very, very strong connection to the port. Uh, uh, they, there, there's a certain level of... Um, uh, there's this myth of <laughs> still living in the port city, uh, and uh, and it is a port city, but it, it doesn't work as a port city. And um, uh, if you if you ask anybody from Rijeka about the port today, they would still say, "Oh yes, Rijeka is a big port because everybody's uh, kind of used to that expression." But the the fact is that the port traffic of all Croatian ports now represents only uh, 0.5 uh, of European port traffic. And um, um, the port was built in 1872. Uh, it, it was built over a decade until 1880s. Uh, and um, already at the beginning of the 20th century, it was the 10th largest port in Europe. And then after the Second World War in Yugoslavia, it became like the, 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 the most important port in the Adriatic, uh, together with Trieste, which was its uh, main competition. Um, uh, but then in the in, in, in 1990s, it completely shut down. So, so here is an image of, um, of what is going on today. Um, investment is being put into building a whole new dock called the uh, Zagreb Container Tem Terminal. And, the, and, and, and it ra ra raises a lot of issues about um, um, uh, whether this is a complete strategic failure or not. <laughs> because uh, while uh, investment is being poured into this kind of development of the port, at the same time, the railway, Croatian railway, is being uh, shut down and brought to bankruptcy. Uh, so um, the port is not only docks and cranes. Um, uh, the port is what moves the economies also in the con continental areas. Um, and unless um, unless uh, uh, the modernization of railway happens uh, and um, uh, the, the, the cargo railway operators get more efficient um, and, and, and uh, unless the state um, makes some development, some, some decisions on development, uh, about development poli politics, um, these in investments are really um, not so logical. So, um, this is the image of the waiting room in the train station, and it is empty like this most of the time uh, on, da on a daily basis. Um, and um, the, the railway uh, company uh, in the past 10 years um, has been undergoing also major changes. Um, as a, as, a, as a state company, it fragmented into smaller companies uh, so that it could be easily privatized. Uh, so now we don't have Croatian railways anymore, but we have uh, uh, cargo and, and then as a separate company, uh, passengers, uh, um, how do you say, passengers travel, and then as a separate company, infrastructure. infrastructure. Um, and um, what is really going on is that uh, these different companies that used to be one company um, uh, are now kind of fighting amongst themselves also for resources and, and issues related to real estate and so on. Um, and, um, and, and, and the railway system is not getting modernized, but it's slowly getting shut down. So, so we were interested in using the waiting room for our piece um, uh, and in placing the piece in it to extend the notion of uh, viewing in, of the piece into an event uh, to, to make a piece that would not be presented in a gallery, but in an open 
public type of space and also to raise issues about waiting because the waiting room um, is a place for waiting and it's a place um, for subjective reflection and it's a place where uh, being in, in, um, in he here and now um, kind of gets um, projected into there and then while we are anticipating departure uh, and while we're waiting at the same time. Uh, so in a way, a waiting room is a metaphor uh, for the city itself, which in the past, which since the 90s, uh, when all the industry started um, declining and closing down and people losing jobs. Um, so since then, the city has been waiting for a new solution, a new vision, a new identity, but uh, not many um, steps like progressive steps forward have been made in that sense. Um, so here is a couple of more slides uh, that that show this place. And we uh, really wanted to, uh, for the purposes of this piece, to keep the waiting room uh, untacked in a way, to keep it for what it is and not turn it into... Uh, a screening room or a cinema uh, yeah, gallery space uh, yes so we wanted to um, to keep the furniture uh, in its original position as it is um, which meant that um, we uh, we had to figure out a way how to use it and we decided that we would fill it with uh, with, with audio sounds uh, and we would project um, onto the ceiling. So it's a quite large white ceiling, about 11 by 11 meters. I'm sorry, I don't know how much that is in feet. But um, uh, by doing this, um, when a passerby or an audience member or um, or somebody who got off the train during the, the show, when they walk into the room, uh, they would still walk into the waiting room. And then by kind of flipping perspective and look, looking up, uh, they, would, um, they would be able to see the piece. So, so th th these were some of our intentions. And then uh, just a few words about our process. We, we started uh, going out in the field and for about a year we were constantly recording throughout the railway strip and all those areas that I mentioned previously and the port areas, which meant we constantly, constantly had to acquire new permits <laughs> from all these different companies and the port authority and uh, the, por the port of Riek. And, um, and um, so... so so it was it was a, a long process of constantly negotiating access and and being in the field and on one hand uh, communicating with uh, the officials of these companies uh, and and that required one type of conversation and on the other hand communicate with all the workers and people who work in the field which was a different type of conversation um, and. Um, uh, this is an image uh, by the metropolis, by those warehouses that I mentioned earlier. And this is uh, in the, in, on top of the silos, uh, a big hall on top of the silos in, in, in the middle of the port. And this is another part of the silos. And um, uh, this is uh, from one of the balconies of the metropolis, looking down at the only cargo that is being really uh, transported here in this port now, which is um, metal scrap. Um, and, and these are some of the warehouses which, um, as you can see, are slowly kind of falling apart. Um, and this is another part of the port close to the um, oil refinery, which is also in the center of the city. Um, and some more images of us uh, recording from tops of certain buildings and this is from top of the lighthouse, which is right, as you can see, at the railway in front of the port. Um, and here, from the top of the building, which is from the roof of the building, which is above this um, locomotive turntable. Um, and um, also, these buildings around this area, uh, which are actually um, 
uh, apartment buildings for workers of uh, the railway and the port. Um, so here's another um, panoramic image of that area. So in this process, we have talked to a lot of people and made a lot of audio interviews. Uh, we've talked to people who live along these areas, in these houses, who used to work for the railway and the port, such as uh, this man who let us use the roof to record. Um, and uh, here's um, <coughs> more images of these um, small houses along the, 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 the railway um, that people that worked for the railway live in uh, or have been living in for some time. And um, as you can see, like there's the, uh, the, the, the train station right in front of these houses. And then there's this image uh, with uh, this big building, which used to be, and for the past 15 years has been closed and shut down and pretty much destroyed. But this used to be um, also like, um, um, a, a building where the uh, railway workers lived. Um, so we've talked uh, to a lot of the workers uh, and our first, our, our initial idea was to include these voices and uh, all of these audio recordings in the piece uh, and slowly as we made friends over time with these people because, because while we were, this year while we were filming and talking to people, um, uh, a lot has been going on in these areas. Uh, many people have been losing jobs, and uh, there, there, there's just a lot of kind of built up tension and uh, uncertainty uh, because um, there's no clear uh, criteria or no transparent criteria based on which people are about the, this restructuring and privatization of the railway. Um, with time, we figured out that we actually will not end up using these audio recordings in the piece because the piece was going to be presented on the premises of the railway and, and it wouldn't be sent off somewhere on some um, festival. And if, um, if it would be uh, understood who, who said something uh, in the piece, then those people might either lose, lose jobs or they will most probably definitely lose jobs and they might think it's because of what they said which was in the piece and somebody heard. So, so again that um, <coughs> posed a lot of questions for us. How, like, how do we approach the piece now because it felt like uh, without including all of these different stories we are kind of just working around <laughs> the major topic. Um, uh, but at the same time it was it was a big risk to uh, to put this in the, in the piece. So uh, here's uh, just different images of um, uh, people that we talked to and, and the workers um, in those areas. So eventually we decided that um, we'll find a, a different way to work um, and um, uh, that um, all of these stories that we have recorded and heard are actually are actually stories that everybody knows and understands because what has been going on not just in this city but in Croatia is pretty much the same story <laughs> be it the railway or the port or any other industry uh, there is really a lot of corruption and each story is very much the same story so um, uh, we will now show the video documentation of the installation uh, through which you can see how the piece functioned and then after that we'll talk more about the piece itself.
Rieka. Tita tit titi tita ta ta tit ta tita tita. In order to view the work, one becomes aware of the meanings that de derive from the site itself um, and the surrounding context and uh, the audience is asked to change the point of view um, uh, uh, and, and, and the perspective by literally looking up towards the ceiling uh, and then looking down and looking around themselves um, and hopefully thinking about the, the, the future destinations. So, um, thank you very much. This was the end of our presentations, but if you have any questions, we're happy to answer.